Question says, Assalamu alaikum Mufti. May Allah grant you with the highest level of paradise and reward you for your work. I've been affected and inspired to seek knowledge through your YouTube videos. I would like to know if there's something called Islamic clothing for men in Islam. I often wear thobe and sometimes on my head or something on my head. However, I'm not sure if it's from the Kitab and Sunnah or only a tradition. Could you provide evidence for either case? I live in the West and my family are sometimes scared when I leave the house dressed in thobe. Is it out of wisdom to dress as people in your country or should we try to wear Islamic as often as possible? Jazakallah khair. Wa alaykum as salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. We say to this uh, questioner, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala um, accept your dua and allow us into to, to Jannah. I mean, we're not befitting of, of yani, yani the highest part of Jannah, only Allah knows who's befitting for that. What we say, may Allah azawajal protect us from the fire and allow us into Jannah. I mean, that's what we say. Um, uh, after returning to the Salams, obviously, wa alaykum wa barakatuh. We thank you very much for your kind words and it pleases us well or pleases us greatly to know that you've been affected and benefited in a positive way from some of the humble basic videos that we have the ability to post by Allah's permission. May Allah continue to allow you to benefit. Ameen. May Allah allow you to continue to benefit. Ameen. We say that um, the answer to the question is yes and no, yes and no. Three answers. Yes, there's something called Islamic clothing. No. There's nothing called Islamic clothing Or there's some things which are not Islamic clothing Or Islamic art articles of clothing or, or articles of Islamic clothing And there's some things which go back and forth like a seesaw Sometimes it's Islamic, sometimes it isn't uh, And before we go on to the details of the answer We say This question, like many other questions Is a great deal of confusion And a great deal of ignorance And there are a lot of people who talk about these things That really don't know what the heck they're talking about Whether they claim to be learned whether they claim to be just speakers and inspirational Islamic Iman boosters, okay, or whatever name or title they give or they're given. People, they talk about the halal and the haram. They talk about what's good, what's bad, what you should, what you shouldn't do. You live in America, you shouldn't do this. You live in the UK, you shouldn't do that. Shaykh al Islam ibn Taymiyyah said, don't dress like this and kada and kada and kada. This is Islamic clothing. The woman has to wear the color black. Black is the sunnah. Black. Many people say things that are right and wrong And many people They speak with total Absolute ignorance Some people just don't know And some people are totally misinformed Jahl Basit and Jahl Murakkab Those just talk out of ignorance And then those who think that they know And they say things that are the exact And total opposite of the reality And there are a few individuals that Allah blesses To allow us to speak the haqq Based off of kitab, sunnah, ijma, based off of common sense, and based off of the reality of life. A simple example of this, those who say wearing a thobe is intimidating. Don't wear a thobe, it's going to intimidate people. The person who says this statement, we're not going to get into his ignorance of kitab, of sunnah, of ijma, but the concept of that's not true. And you're not living in a real world. Because when I wear my thobe and I go into Walmart or this place and this place, hello, how you doing? Have a nice day, so on and so forth. I don't see no one intimidated and scared and afraid. Oh, he's gonna blow up the place. So a lot of times people not only do they have Islamic ignorance, but they talk and their kalam is in a different atmosphere. It's in a different stratosphere of reality. That's not real, that's not true. Everyone is not afraid of a beard. Everyone is not afraid of niqab. So don't say that. Not only is it Islamically wrong, but it is what it's not in what reality. Everybody understand what I'm trying to say? It's very important. So therefore, there's some pieces of clothing, some articles of clothing that there's no doubt are Islamic. Whether it's a woman's khimar, whether it is the style of a man, his beard being long and full, okay? Whether it is a Muslim wearing loose clothes, a Muslim man wearing loose clothes, fitting, not fitting clothes, whether it's a Muslim man wearing the color white, Okay, and the list goes on. So there are certain things that are clearly proven by kitab and by sunnah. All right, hijab and the different types of hijab, the beard, wearing white. Rather, the qamis, the Prophet Alayhi favorite piece of clothing was the qamis. And a qamis is a very long, loose shirt, or something that you put on from the top of your body that covers most of the body. And it has no doubt included in that is a thobe. Included in that is a shalwar qamis, Afghan or Afghani, Pakistani, or whatever the case may be. Everybody understand this? Alright, so the point is here is that 
there's some things that are included in the command to do. And there's some things that the Prophet ﷺ was fond of and he liked. If a person wears those pieces of clothing, those articles of clothing such as a turban, with the intention of looking like Muhammad, being like Muhammad, imitating Muhammad, then that's fine. And if they wear those things out of Arab culture, African culture, Asian culture, then that's a different story. Hopefully that's clear. So that's the part of the answer that says, yes, there are things that are from Islamic clothes or Islamic tradition. Hopefully that's clear and that's in brief. As far as pieces of clothes or articles of clothing, attire that isn't Islamic, then there are some things that are just cultural. In this country, people wear red scarves. You can't say that wearing the sun as soon as to wear a red checkered scarf. Muhammad didn't wear a red checkered scarf. He did not advise, command, and order the people to wear red checkered scarves. He didn't warn the people from not wearing red checkered scarves. So that's a cultural, traditional practice. However, the concept of covering the head, of being modest, the concept of a respected, respectable man covering his head, not leaving outside, going outside with his head uncovered, there lies no doubt that is Islamic. Whereas the Prophet always covered his head. He had his head covered when he was outside in front of the people. Everybody understand this? All right, so therefore, some things, women in this country, they wear this type of this color. No one can say that that's the sunnah to wear this color. You have to wear black. Where does it state that? Is there a hadith saying that a woman has to wear black? Is there ijma consensus that a woman has to wear black? If there isn't, then that's a cultural color. That's cultural taste. This jacket that I'm wearing, this red flannel pattern. No one can say it's haram for me to wear this or it's mandatory. Unless it's based off of kitab and sunnah. And then we have some things that are in the middle. That are in the middle. A tug of war. It could be Islamic with the proper intention, such as the turban. It could be Islamic with the proper intention, such as modesty and covering the head. It could be Islamic with regards to the intention of uh, distinguishing yourself as a Muslim. And being recognized as a Muslim. And no one confusing and thinking that you're not a Muslim. If you have that intention, that practice, then yes, wearing a thobe, wearing a black abaya, wearing a burqa, things like this, that is Islamic. Because these pieces of clothing are well known that this is what the Muslims dress like. This is what the Muslims wear, okay? The people in Afghanistan, someone says, most people in Afghanistan are Muslim. So if a person wears a certain type of turban, a certain type of pants and shirt that's known that Afghanis wear, and he's a Muslim, and that's his traditional Islamic clothing, we say then from that aspect, it could be Islamic. Because a person is distinguished as a Muslim. And there's so many ignorant people, unfortunately, who say there's no such thing as Islamic clothing. They think that Islam is just in one's heart. Do whatever you want, say whatever you want. There's no Islamic identity and distinction, and they're wrong. And if you want to know the truth about this, they talk about Ibn Taymiyyah. Ibn Taymiyyah says this, read Ibn Taymiyyah's book, Iqtidat Surat Mustaqim, and see what he says about clothes. And see what he says about styles and foods and drinks and holidays and festivals to show the importance of a Muslim looking like a Muslim. I'm not from this country, however, I'm uh, presenting myself as a Muslim. It's well known, this is what Muslims wear. Everybody understand this? But if you don't have that intention, if you're just wearing it because that's what you wear and you have an opposite intention, then it's a different story. Everybody understand this? So that's in brief. Uh, as far as your parents being afraid, then make dua for your parents. Make dua for them. I'm sure your parents love you. I'm sure they want good for you. I'm sure they're afraid for anything harmful to happen to you and come your way. However, perhaps your parents lack knowledge. Perhaps they're ignorant. Perhaps they've been influenced. Perhaps their brains have been stained by the media, by the propaganda machine, the onslaught. Okay? Terrorism, terrorists, this, that, extremists, fundamentalists, Islamic radical, etc., 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 etc. The bombardment of the news. And perhaps they've been affected by that. And then when they see a thobe, when they see a beard, they think that someone's going to look at you. Oh, he's a terrorist. He has a bomb on him. He has a set of dynamite. He's going to blow himself up. Perhaps they think this because of how they've been brainwashed, unfortunately. So make the offer them. Don't be harsh with them. Don't be violent with them. Okay? Make the offer them. Follow what you know is right. Follow what you think and believe is right. Do what you think is best, even if it isn't mandatory. Even if it's only recommended, follow it. Do it. And anyone who says, don't wear a thobe, you should wear pants and a shirt, you shouldn't stick out from the people of your country, what type of speech is this? How much opportunity comes your way when someone sees you with a thobe on? How much people will respect you? And how many evil things will be taken away from you because you're a Muslim? I'm not even going to go and say anything to him. A woman is not going to approach you and so on and so forth because he has on a dress, he has a beard, he's not going to take this cigarette or this cup of beer or this date. 
Everybody understand this? So being like a Muslim, just like a Muslim, there's no doubt it has so many benefits. Not saying that it's mandatory to wear a thobe. Not saying it's obligatory to wear a thobe. However, it's obligatory for you to dress in a modest fashion. Your wife is covered up. She has on hijab and you got on skinny jeans. You have on a tight fitting shirt. Clean, slick face. Oh, Sheikh Islam and Taymiyyah said this. Fulan said this about the beard. I can do this. I can do that. But your wife, she's covered from head to toe. How does that look? What type of dawah is that? Those who say that Islam is unfair, Islam is oppressive to women, that is exactly what they're going to say and believe when they see your wife dressed in head to toe and you're looking like you're about to go to the club because of Sheikh Islam ibn Taymiyyah said. That's nonsense. And no one with knowledge is going to talk like that. So even if you do wear pants, the pants shouldn't be tight. They shouldn't be beneath your ankle. They shouldn't be pure silk. According to those ulama who say it shouldn't be solid red, even though that's a discussion in itself. If you're going to wear pants, let them be Islamic, huh? Islamified. But the best thing to wear, in my humble opinion, is the traditional dress of the Muslims. And I don't think that you're going to stick out like a sore thumb. And if you do, then it's a good way of sticking out like a sore thumb. And from Iman, it's for you to stick out like a sore thumb sometimes. Last but not least, many people who give these rulings and deal with these different debates and these issues, we're not saying, we're not dealing with it right now, most of the times they want to fit in. And they don't want to be recognized as Muslims. You can trim your beard because I don't want to have a what? A full beard. And I don't want no one to recognize me with having a full beard. I can go here. I can do this. I can fit in. No one is going to look at me like as a terrorist. You don't have to wear niqab because the niqab is extreme. It's harsh. They're going to look at my wife like she has a bomb on her. Most people who give these rulings, they're afraid of the kuffar. They're fearful of the kuffar. And they want to fit in and look like the kuffar. And a Muslim is not supposed to be like that. This is my simple, basic, summarized answer to the question. May Allah give you strength. May Allah give you courage. You have to stand up in what you believe in. Wallahu alam.